Okay, welcome to another reading vlog. This week we've got something a little bit exciting because I'm going to be participating in the Blackathon 2021 vlogging Instagram and reading challenge this week. So I'm going to be doing the most. <laughs> So I'm actually really excited. We're going to attempt to do as much of the prompts as we can and I'm going to take you along on the ride. I already have my TBR for this week picked out. I have a bunch of thriller and horror novels from black authors. This one is for the Books and Lala's Literally Dead Book Club book pick of February. That was a mouthful. This one is for the Late Night Book Club clubs book pick for February. So I have two book club picks for this week that I'm hoping to get through. And then these three are specifically for Blackathon. This is the Buddy Read Wife of the Gods for the thriller horror category. And then I also ended up grabbing They All Fall Down and The Ballad of Black Tom, which obviously I'll get into a little bit more as I start reading them. And then I threw in two additional horror thrillery type books. Oh, I also forgot to mention for the reading that I'm doing this week, I'm also reading Lakewood, but that's another book that I didn't get a physical copy of. I'm really excited about that one. I've, I've heard some creepy cool things about it. Now, about today, before I actually get into all of the Blackathon prompts and whatnot, uh, I just finished up the February rewards designs for Patreon and I ordered those and gave an update to my patrons so that they know what to expect for this month. Then I'm going to edit last week's reading vlog and schedule that for tomorrow. I did start reading Grading Curves last night on my Kindle and really enjoying it. It's totally just smut, basically. <laughs> can't say too much about the plot because it's it's definitely just a steamy romance. And yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm rambling. Let me get to editing last week's video so I can get that out of the way. Okay, so I finished editing last week's video and it's currently rendering and stuff, so I can't export it yet or upload it. But while I wait for that, it's time to switch on to Blackathon prompts. For the video challenge, the first thing is to share a 2021 anticipated release. I ended up pre-ordering this and it came earlier this month, which I was all like, hey! Hello, it's editing me here. I'm probably gonna pop in a lot for this video. I was a mess last week, but um, I wanted to give you a little information about why this was one of my anticipated reads for the year. There are a lot of other ones as well, but this just happened to be one that I have my hands on, so I thought it would be a good one to share. And this is Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson, which is basically about a girl who falls for a guy and starts pretending to be someone she's not to try and impress him. And I think it's going to be a big self-discovery type of book. I realize a little bit after the fact that I think it's going to be less about the romance and more about her becoming herself. And I'm really excited about that. Now that I have completed the week, I'm also a little bit nervous about this one as well because there is going to be that deception aspect of her trying, you know, to impress this guy. And I'm not a really big fan of that. So I am still excited, but I'm also super nervous that it's going to be something that kind of gets on my nerves. So we'll kind of see how it goes. <laughs> Fingers crossed I enjoy it. <laughs> The Instagram challenge, on the other hand, is a cover recreation. These are some of the books that I think I might be able to recreate the covers with a ton of Photoshop. I think I'm probably going to go with this one because this one's the easiest. I'll have to darken my hair in Photoshop. I should have a t-shirt like this still. Okay, it looks like I got rid of all of my v-neck, but I'll try and see if I can make this work change my hairstyle. <laughs> she doesn't have any earrings. I ended up 
finishing the grading curves novella which was definitely very steamy very erotic i ended up giving it four stars for what it was if it wasn't a novella erotic erotic story i probably would have knocked off more points based off of like believability and speed and things like that and then i started reading the survival of molly southborn i feel like i got pretty far into it i am enjoying it again i was like i was hesitant about this because of how the first one left off i was like i wonder what we can have in the next one to make it interesting but so far this being the second book that i've read from tade thompson i'm pretty impressed with the kind of stuff that he does interested to see how this ends up in the end. Okay, finally the first book down for the week. I just finished The Survival of Molly Southborn and I loved it. I don't know why I love these so much because I don't necessarily feel like they have um, a bunch of answers. They're kind of open-ended, they're weird, but I loved it. Okay, so I have kind of uh, just been relaxing for the most part. I ended up doing some book tracking on Notion because I do have a tracker so that I can do my stats and stuff. So I ended up finishing the cover recreation, which you can see here compared to the final. That was fun. <laughs> And now I'm thinking I'm gonna try and read one of the four books for the Blackathon. The fourth book I have the Kindle version for Lakewood. I think I'm gonna do the novella because I'm pretty sure I don't have an audiobook for this one. And this is for prompt number two, named after Victor Lavelle, which is the author of this one specifically. It was supposed to be a supernatural or paranormal horror, and I ended up going with The Ballad of Black. Tom. So yeah, I think I might try and read this tonight. Guys, so the first 1,000 subscribers who Okay, I am not quite halfway through this and I don't know what to expect. I'm not as engaged as I would like to be, but there are some like interesting creepy things that are going on so I'm hoping that it'll kind of pick up pace soon. I don't know. I'm 58 pages into it and I keep wanting to take a break and do something else. Good morning. So today is Sunday, day two of our Blackathon video Instagram reading challenge. I finished my first Blackathon book. This is The Ballad of Black Tom. I enjoyed it. It was cool. I didn't love it. It's probably just going to be three stars for me. I also ended up starting one of my NetGalley arcs, e-arcs, the audio for Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry, I believe is what it's called. Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry is a book about a girl who ends up writing a bunch of lists as a like journaling type of coping mechanism that she does and they're very personal or at least some of them are and the journal that she writes all of the lists in goes missing and then someone starts blackmailing her, tell her that she has to complete one of the lists that has a bunch of things that she never really wants to do and if she doesn't they will share all of the other really personal lists with the school. The last person who was known to have had the book they had a very bad encounter so it's kind of an enemies to lovers sort of thing and he ends up helping her to find out who's blackmailing her and why. Okay, so I have my list here of all of the Blackathon stuff. Today, we're going to be doing a fan cast for Blackathon video prompts where I talk about a book I think needs a like movie or TV adaptation. And right now, I'm all for Make a Scene by Mimi Grace. I think this was absolutely 
adorable. I think it would make for an excellent rom-com, especially if there is a similar like tone to the illustration on the cover. I don't know. I just, I love the idea of that. That's my fan cast. I don't think I mentioned it, but I am planning on doing Ashen Book Sapphic Readathon. Not the whole thing. So this is going on from February 14th to February 27th. And I might do a couple of them, but I'm mostly just going to focus on doing the buddy read. I'm going to read that for the challenge. I might try to see if I can do some of the, the prompts. So as far as I know, these are the books that I have that focus on female female romances. Okay, I have finally finished The Opposite of Always book by Justin A. Reynolds. I enjoyed this book. I didn't really feel so much like it was a romance, like it, it was, but I think it was more about second chances and whatever. It's, it's that whole Groundhog Day repeating something over and over and over again until you get it right. The feeling, the tone of it was a little bit different than what I was expecting. I did really enjoy it. I did really like it, but I had a hard time staying engaged and wanting to continue it. So like now that it's done, I'm like, that was really, really good. But during the process, I was all like, okay, I want to listen to something else. Like, okay, how about something else? So this one took a surprising long time to finish, but now that it's done, I'm all like, this was great. <laughs> it was awesome. I liked it. Okay. I was listening to the audiobook for Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry, which is a audiobook arc that I ended up getting. It's my first arc that I'm reading. I have a couple of them. This one I thought would be fitting for the Black Author Readathon. Apparently am not doing what I'm supposed to be doing this week, which is reading all of the thriller horror stuff. I'm just like in the mood for romances apparently. I will say that this probably wasn't the best book for me to pick. The premise I think is interesting. So far I am interested in finding out what happens but because I'm not a big fan of secrets between people who really care about each other, so like romantic partners or family or best friends, things like that. That kind of irks me a little bit. So I am struggling with this more than I thought it would, but that's more on me than it is on the story itself. I feel like that should have been implied by the synopsis. I just guess I wasn't thinking about it. I was thinking more about the romance side of it. Um, I think this is a little bit so far more focused on the drama of the situation that she's going through, which is just one that I can't really relate to and kind of bothers me. So that's where I'm currently at. <laughs> Okay, because this is an ARC audio, every once in a while there's like a little watermark HarperCollins that like pops out <laughs> like randomly and it ca catches me off guard every time. <laughs> HarperCollins. <laughs> the first couple of times it confused me. I was like, what the heck was that? And then I realized that it was saying HarperCollins publisher. Makes sense. It makes sense. Okay, so I just finished Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry Net Galley Advanced Reader Copy Audiobook and I'm trying to write the review, make sure that I include as much like helpful and useful thoughts as I possibly can and also figure out exactly how I feel about it. Overall, I enjoyed the book, but there were some things that kind of bothered me. I love that concept. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. I didn't think about the fact though that this book filled with secrets would probably have some things that that personally feel like shouldn't be a secret. There were a couple of things that just bothered me that she hadn't talked to the person about it. Although it kind of made sense for the overall story that there would be some more serious things involved. I don't know, it just kind of irked me and that it's similar with like the boyfriend project from last week. I enjoyed the concept. I think it was done very well. Even though I know it's a popular plot thing, it irks me. That and infidelity. I cannot stand infidelity. That's not related to this book. That's just, <laughs> these are just things that 
really bother me and the secrecy thing sort of took play in this book. Okay, so this is probably such a like petty thing to be annoyed about, but I hate when Goodreads changes the order that I finish something in. I think I'm going to start reading some of the physical books that I have, so I should try and get through them. I might also read more romances. I don't know, I'm all over the place. I fell asleep while watching watching this while reading this second off I am not enjoying it so far like I just don't care right now all we're learning about me Mir is Miriam and I hate her <laughs> like I'm so annoyed I do not like her okay so here is an example of her wonderful thoughts a sick man a country chick a shaggy nurse a cokehead cook, an uppity banker, and a mass shooter. She's wonderful. And I turned my attention elsewhere, like to the creature sitting in the shade of the building. She was a chubby, older white woman with wiry brown and gray hair and skin as beaten as ginger root. Judgmental bitch like who are you to say shit about other people like that so basically if i'm not into it around here or something like this is gonna be a dnf <laughs> 36 pages in a whole lot of i'm not enjoying this and finally a hmm maybe we'll find something interesting none of these characters are really supposed to be likable i really don't like the one that we're stuck with i'm 76 pages in it's starting to get a little bit interesting i do feel like this is a slow book i wonder if this would be more enjoyable if it was more like a novella and it just got to the point <laughs> Okay, it is pretty late at this point, but I'm getting ready to wind down and I was thinking that I would pick up Seven Sins Insatiable Hunger book, which was one of the suggestions for friends to lover and childhood to grown folks romance. I just wanted something different. I needed a break. <laughs> Good morning! So today is Monday. I have today off from work. So uh, we're gonna try and get some things done. I ended up pausing on this last night because I wasn't super feeling it. I started this because I wanted something a little bit kind of cheesy and romantic to just kind of switch the vibes. I got page 86, breezed through this. Don't know how I feel about it though. I'm definitely not loving it nearly as much as I have a couple of the other books that I've read recently. It has that Hallmark movie feel. <laughs> Why is there still more than half of this book left? <laughs> We could have finished here. I keep starting books and then being all like, I want something else and then trying to shift gears. I'm tempted to read this real quick because I feel like I can get through it fairly fast. It seems like it'll be a quick read. I have just finished Check Please by Ngozi Ukazu and this was adorable. This was so cute. It definitely is a web comic style comic. I believe it started off as a web comic. It's not a romance, at least not this one. I think the next one might be more about that, but this is more about him being a hockey player. But I think the next one will be a little bit more romancy. Okay, I changed. I couldn't, I could not put up with the uh, green sweater on top of this one. So glad that I read this so that I could finish something today because <laughs> I don't imagine finishing these anytime soon. I might try to finish this one because I'm using it for the readathon. And then in terms of the blackathon prompts and just my plans for this week day, I'll be sharing with you a Afrocentric meal. Anyway, that's my update. I will catch you later. 
Okay, so I have finally finished Insatiable Hunger and I don't think there is anything really wrong with this book, but it does that thing where the whole entire plot is based off of miscommunication and misunderstandings and it was so irritating. Yeah, I think I'm only gonna give it two stars. All right, it is time for my Afrocentric, or in this case, Jamaican meal. It's not a full on meal, I'm sorry. Uh, but I did get myself some Jamaican bun and cheese and I decided that I would uh, put it on a spread and use that to do the Instagram post for today. Oh my Kobo, and that's the last book I'm gonna be reading. Um, from. Okay, so I'm currently writing the review for this and I'm realizing that I dislike this even more than I thought. The first 80 pages or so wasn't that bad. Like it was fine, it was enjoyable. I was able to get past the parts that I felt like bleh about. The rest of the book, all of this part started just really bothering me because there was that whole miscommunication trope. There was this entitlement feeling that came across. There was the lack of understanding and caring that I felt came from his character. I really didn't like him. <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> Uh, like I said, I almost gave this three stars because overall I felt fine reading it. I did get to the end. I was interested enough in seeing how things worked out. Okay, because I am so good this week at staying on top of my TBR plans, I am re <laughs> reading another book that's not on my TBR. Um, so <laughs> heck is wrong with me this week? I'm doing such a bad job at doing Blackathon 2021. I think it's just because the books that I've been like reading for it have not been super successful. So every time I'm like, ooh, I want to read something right now, I pick something else up instead. Anyway, so <laughs> I have just started Agent by Her Side. I am 32 pages in. I decided that I would try tabbing the book orangey yellow color for things that aren't my favorite but aren't the worst. I have blue for questions that I have and then I have tabs for other things as well. So red will be anything that's like that's problematic. I'm really not a fan of that or like that's just totally not my thing. And then I have two other colors for possible things. Okay, I changed into my pajamas. Anyway, I continued to read Colton 911 Agent by Her Side and I do have to admit that I'm personally a fan of like detective or cop stories or things like that. Like I dig it. It doesn't feel like a chore. Like I'm just enjoying the process. Now it's gonna make me want to read everything physically because like I can't tab audiobooks and I mostly listen to audiobooks more than anything else but like this is so enjoyable to be able to just tab the parts that correlate to this that or the other. Good morning! Today is Tuesday February 16th and I ended up reading a good chunk into this book. 40 pages left to go. I don't know I'm gonna try to finish this before I have to start working and then I'm hoping to switch over to audiobooks. I was really 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 enjoying this in the beginning to the point where I was thinking that like this was for sure gonna be a four stars maybe even a five stars but there were some things that weren't and they kind of got worse and worse as things went down and I do have a major letdown in here as well and then kind of the whole ending part is a little bit disappointing to me because it kind of switched gears in a way that I'm personally not a fan of. I'm still enjoying it. It's just definitely not going to be a favorite at this point. I will definitely say this is not a steamy book. <laughs> If you're looking for the steam factor, this is not it. Okay, so I have finished Colton 911 Agent by Her Side and objectively this is a three stars. I enjoyed it for the most part, but there were a lot of things that I didn't 
love and that kind of bothered me. I also loved tabbing. Tabbing is so fun. I did pick this up. I'm 112 pages into this book and I hate it. You guys, it's taking forever to have anything interesting happen, but this one is just a no-go. So I'm officially DNFing it. I am failing at Blackathon this week. Okay, so several days have passed. I never did get the questions from Blackathon. I just didn't know where to find them because it wasn't posted with all of the original stuff. So I haven't done that. I guess today we're supposed to showcase the cultural cosplay. The Steven Universe combo. And I thought that was just so cute. I love that character and I love the little outfit. So I ended up cosplaying as them together. Then I have not been reading basically for the past two days. So I'm a little bit behind, but I'm starting this right now. And then I'm just going to work on some Patreon designs for next month because I don't want to be behind like I was this month. Actually, I don't know how far into this I actually am. I'm listening to the audiobook for when no one is watching and I'm enjoying it so far. Not much has happened. We're still in the setup phase, but I do like the writing. I like the characters so far and I'm interested in kind of seeing how things go. So there's at least a setup to kind of keep me interested. I did end up spending some time sketching and I absolutely hate <laughs> So like I have no intentions of filming any of the art that I'm doing right now because I'm currently in a really severe art block, which is really frustrating because I have projects that I'm really excited about doing. But when I try to work on them, I feel like I am technically incapable of doing it. So I think what I'm just gonna do right now is I'm just gonna do some like studies and not focus on trying to make anything. Good morning, today is Thursday, February 18th. So I just finished When No One Is Watching. I cried. I was very emotionally involved in this book. I think it was very well done. It definitely made me anxious and upset. There is a huge bias that I have towards this book because a lot of my emotions were around something that's happening in reality that this is, you know, a fiction about. This was not an easy book for me to read. I think it did a good job. There are a few things that I still kind of have questions about that like I want to know more about but at the same time I also feel like it told me all of the things that I needed to know. Okay so next up I think I'm going to try and download the audio of this from Libro FM and start listening to Lakewood. Okay, still listening to Lakewood. I think I'm like halfway through and I kind of just needed a break. I don't know. It's been interesting. Whatever's going to happen doesn't seem to have fully happened yet. Okay, so my work day is done. I haven't really been able to read as much as I was hoping to or to listen to the audiobooks as much as I had wanted. <laughs> So I just finished Once Ghosted Twice Shy. It was good. It was enjoyable. I had a nice time. I don't know. Like part of me is wondering, should I give it four star? No, I think it's a three stars. I do really like it though. Like it was nice, but it's just not a favorite. Gosh, I have like sleepy eyes for sure. Okay, so I finished listening to Lakewood. I fell asleep while I was listening to it and when I woke up, it had just gotten to like the finishing part and it was all like, we thank you for listening to this production by blah, blah, blah. And I was all like, well, that wasn't great. So I went back and I started listening to it again. And when I actually finished it, awake. <laughs> it. I think it was pretty good. I'm thinking that I'm probably gonna give it three stars because I don't think it was like remarkable in any way. There weren't any like big twists or turns or anything that really got me being all like oh, whoa. I'm a little bit disappointed. Part of me almost wanted to give it four stars and I think that has more to do with the fact that I'm annoyed at how many three stars I'm giving out this month. Um my battery's gonna die so I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll get back to you. 
Hello! So today is Friday, February 19th. It is the last day of this reading vlog and I'm finally feeling kind of back to myself. So hopefully I'm going to be fairly productive, fingers crossed. I haven't edited the video so I'm sure I'm just going to spend all of my night just doing that. But I did finish another book which was Get a Life Chloe Brown which I absolutely loved. I started this last night and finished it this morning and oh my goodness five stars from me I'm so excited to get the next book I'm actually a little bit sad because I think um typically they're all soft cover but I have the hard cover so like I'm debating whether or not I should put off until there's a hardcover version of the next book or if I should just get all of the soft covers and have two of the I don't know <laughs> The idea of not having it be consistent though is driving me up the walls, but I really, really, really want to get the next book because I'm like, I love this one so much. So I'm currently 11 books into the week <laughs> and somehow, somehow I'm still failing Blackathon 2021. How is that possible? I only had four books on my list. Still haven't finished the last book which is Wife of the Gods. This is a physical read so I can't read it because I'm working right now. I also have been in meetings all day so I haven't been able to listen to any audiobooks or anything. Not that it matters because the one book that I'm supposed to be reading like I said is I don't have the audio for it. Pretty much giving up on this one. It sounds like someone's ringing my doorbell. I will be right back. Okay, so work isn't even over. I still have like tickets and stuff that I have to do and I am so tired. Like so tired. <laughs> this week with all of the things I wanted to do happened to be the week that my body was just all like mm, no. <laughs> Something's wrong with me I'm sorry I still need to edit this video. Okay this video is really long so I'm just gonna try and go through these really quick. So the first book I ended up finishing was The Survival of Molly Southborn. This is the second book in the Molly Southborn series and it's basically about a girl who whenever she bleeds uh, another Molly sprouts out of nowhere and attacks her. So it's this like weird horror sci-fi type thing. I didn't think it was scary but I did love it just as much as I loved the first one. Ended up giving it five stars. Then I ended up reading a erotic no novella called Grading Curves about a woman who goes to get a tattoo, has a fling with a tattoo artist, and then later discovers that he is one of her college students in the class that she's teaching and they, you know, have to figure out what to do with that. <laughs> Steamy, it was a little bit ridiculous, it was fun, I ended up giving it four stars. Then I ended up finishing Opposite of Always by Justin Reynolds which is about a high school boy who falls in love with a girl over the period of four months and then she ends up dying and he goes back in time to when he first met her and experiences that over and over and over again until he figures out what he has to do. I enjoyed it. It was a little bit tough while I was reading it because I was expecting more of a romance while I feel like this is more of a self-discovery and figuring out what the right thing to do is sort of story. So I did enjoy it, ended up giving it three stars. I liked it more after I finished it though. The process of reading it was a little bit difficult. Then I ended up reading Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry, which was my first ever ARC. I got the audiobook for it and I really enjoyed it. I will say that I had some issues with it which had more to do with my personal preferences in stories. There was that kind of misunderstanding, secrets not telling people thing that I don't really like, but the whole story was about a girl who writes all of her thoughts and things, important things down in the form of lists in a journal. The journal goes missing, somebody finds it and starts blackmailing her based off of it and she has to complete a list of things that she had no intention of ever doing to basically get the book back and the last guy who ended up having it who she doesn't particularly like in the beginning ends up helping her to try and figure out who's blackmailing her and prove that he wasn't the one who took it and they start you know falling for each other. It was cute, I enjoyed it, but I just don't like that miscommunication not talking to people trope. <laughs> 
personally. Then I read the next book for Blackathon, or I guess it was the first book technically for Blackathon for the prompts, and this was The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Lavelle. All of the books are by Black authors, so I won't say that for all of them, but uh, this is about a Black guy in I believe 1920s New York who does odd jobs for white families to make some money and it's a little bit questionable and some rich white guy asks him to, to do something and weird things start happening. So it's kind of about that. It's definitely this fantasy sci-fi type story. I enjoyed it. I never really connected with the main character, but the ending I thought was pretty cool. I think the general idea was kind of cool. I do feel like some things were missing and it could have been done differently, but my biggest thing with it was mostly just that I never really connected with the character, so I ended up giving this three stars. Then I ended up picking up Check Please by Ngozi Yukazu, and this is, I believe it was a webcomic originally, and it's a slice of life comic, so it's little like bite chunk moments about a YouTuber who gets a hockey scholarship for college and it's his experience. Um, he likes baking pies and his hockey team and he just talks about, you know, befriending his team and the little things that they get up to. I did really enjoy it quite a bit. I think it was really cute. The art's adorable. Character's adorable. They do have these little tweets that he puts out at the very end that I wished was shown in between the actual stories themselves to fill in some of the blanks and have a more smooth reading experience. But overall, I still really, really enjoyed it. I think I ended up giving it four stars. If it wasn't for the art, it probably would have just been three stars. I'm excited to read the next one. <laughs> next up, we have Insatiable Hunger, which is one of these Harlequin Desire romance books. And this is about a guy who fell in love with his best friend, never really told her, they kind of drift apart, and then during their high school reunion they have feelings or a spark or something like that, but she's in a relationship with somebody, so they end up trying to, you know, figure out what's going on and this, that, and the other. I liked the idea of it, I liked the beginning of it, I was like 80, 80 pages in and I was like, yeah, this is great, it's done, right? But it wasn't. <laughs> 217 pages and I started liking it less and less and less and less the longer it went on. For the main man character who was supposed to be like this nice guy who you know fell in love with his best friend and has been waiting for her blah 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 starts becoming this kind of like annoying almost manipulative type of guy who has no patience and it's just wah 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 wah. So didn't like that and then this whole entire thing again was based off of that miscommunication misunderstanding trope which I really dislike liked and disliked even more because the guy character became less and less and less likable. So <laughs> um, I just didn't enjoy it towards the end. So I ended up giving this a two stars. The steamy moments were cool. And like I said, I was into it for the first like 80 pages. Then I ended up picking up Colton 911 Agent by Her Side by Deborah Fletcher Mello. And this one, like Insatiable Hunger, was recommended for the Black Author Readathon. This is about a agent who is working with a private eye or something like that on a case. And while they're trying to check in on something, his son gets kidnapped and in the process of trying trying to save him, he gets injured. And because of that, he hires the private eye lady to help basically take care of him and his son while they're working together on the case because he can't do a lot of things by himself. And she agrees. And while they are kind of hiding away, she and him starts building, you know, some sort of relationship. And I really enjoyed it at first. I don't know, there were a lot of things that kind of started popping up and getting worse and worse towards the end. This was another one that got more and more disappointing the more into the book that I got. I did have a lot of fun. This is the first time in a really long time that I've tabbed a book. Possibly the first time I did it not for a school book. <laughs> so I ended up giving this one three stars. Then we have had they all fall down which as you guys saw I did not enjoy this I did not finish this I 
just I just didn't like it. Then I ended up reading When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole which is another thrillery one. This one's for the Books and Lala's Literally Dead book club pick for February and it is very 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 much about gentrification and the effects on the black communities, the poor black communities that are affected by it. This one in particular. Things are kind of happening really fast and in a questionable way and a couple of people start questioning like what's going on? Uh, try and figure out on their own what's happening and it gets really interesting. I ended up really liking it in the end. I do feel like I have a bias because I just got really emotional about gentrification, not entirely related to the book but also just reminded by the book. I feel like that could have affected my overall rating. I ended up giving it five stars. Then I ended up picking up the sapphic readathon buddy pick book which was once ghosted twice shy also by Alyssa cole this one is about two women who end up connecting over like tinder or something and they have a great time while one of them is temporarily in new york city and then when she ends up going back to her country the other one kind of ghosts her and won't reply to her and things like that and later, eight months later, she comes back to New York and they end up meeting up again and they have a second chance. It was cute. I liked the characters. I liked the general story. I never really connected with everything and some things I think could have been done better. But overall, it was cute and I enjoyed it. So I ended up giving it three stars. And then the last book that I ended up reading this week, whew, so many, um, was Get a Life Chloe Brown, which is a romance about Chloe Brown who has a chronic illness and when she has a near-death experience that kind of puts in perspective how little she's done over the past couple of years and she makes a list to try and remedy that and she ends up partnering with the superintendent at her new apartment complex to help her get through some of the list items and while that is happening they start uh, catch and feels for each other. It was really cute. It was really enjoyable. It was a very happy feel good book. I ended up giving it five stars and I cannot wait to read the next book in the series. There are three brown sisters so there's one book for each of them and I'm super excited. <laughs> So that is it for the books that I ended up reading this week. I am super tired at this point. I'm currently editing the footage so hopefully this isn't super repetitive or anything. I try to simplify this ending part because boy is there a lot of content this week. <laughs> But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, thumbs up. Include this emoji in the comment section down below to let me know that you've gotten this far and to help promote, support the channel and this video. And also, if you want to see more of this content, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell thing or whatever, and I will see you next week in the next video. Until next time, bye!